morning boys and girls it's good to see you again this morning although we can't see each other we have to meet the modern way this week but welcome to the Sunday school of this week I'm glad we can meet together this way in the Lord's name in our catechism this this morning we're up to question 11 you'll remember the last few questions were who was Adam and Eve's eldest son and we remember that was Cain. And what did he do, or what was he? He was a tiller of the ground, or a farmer. Last week's question is, who was their second son? And that was Abel. And this week's question is, what was he? What did Abel do? And the answer is, Abel was a keeper of the sheep. Abel was a shepherd. There was a... Nothing particularly good or bad about their different jobs and careers. It wasn't wrong that Cain was a farmer and Abel was a shepherd. The reason God received Abel's offering and didn't receive Cain's is because of the, of the attitude of the boys' hearts. So Cain put his offering together of the fruits that he had, he had um, farmed, whether they were fruits and, or vegetables. But he thought... If he put together the best offering he could and brought it to the Lord, God must surely accept his offering because they showed the good work that Cain had done in the field. They showed his very best efforts, his, his attempts to be pleasing to God. And so uh, Cain was so sure that God would be impressed with his good farming. And we, we read that, and Aunt Eileen taught us, that God did not accept Cain's offering. Abel, on the other hand, as a shepherd, Abel approached God in a very different way. He came to God and he thought, I know I am a sinner. There's nothing I can do in myself to please God. What I need is to have my sins forgiven, to have them atoned for, to have them covered. And so Abel, from the, from the fold of sheep that he had, he brought a lamb, and he offered it to the Lord. And it says that God accepted and was pleased with, with Abel's offering. <clears throat> Abel, as a shepherd, was the first in a, a long line of godly shepherds. And we remember that Joseph and his brothers too tended Jacob, their father's sheep. Remember that David was a shepherd too. But the answer to our question is not just that Abel was a shepherd, that he herded the sheep, but that Abel was a keeper of the sheep. He cared for them, he looked after them, he kept them. And in that answer we have a very clear picture pointing forward to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know the song that we sing most weeks at your request, The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord Jesus is the keeper of the sheep the keeper of his sheep. In John chapter 10, we read of him. The Lord says in John chapter 10, verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, or just a hired shepherd, he doesn't own them, he doesn't care for them. He that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. The Lord saying, there are those who pretend to be shepherds, but they don't care for the sheep. But the Lord Jesus is not just a shepherd, he is the good shepherd. He is the keeper of the sheep. And this is what he says in that chapter, further on in John chapter 10. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. The Lord Jesus says, No man can pluck the sheep, my lambs, out of my hand. I am the keeper of the sheep. And so though we are not together today, we are grateful to the Lord that he keeps his sheep. He knows them. He knows where you are and where I am. 
He sees us and he tends us as a good shepherd and he keeps us. He doesn't just keep us safe, keep our bodies safe from harm. He keeps our souls safe for all eternity. He says, none can pluck you out of my hand. He keeps the sheep. He says, my father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. If you ever fear that someone could pluck you out of the Lord's hand, he says it is impossible. No man is greater than my father. No one is stronger than him. No one can override him or take you out of his hand. Our Lord Jesus is the keeper of the sheep. Auntie Arlene will bring you the message this morning and we thank her again for her willingness to do that and to record it and upload it for you to watch. Shall we just pray? Our loving and the gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you that although we are not together this morning, Lord, you know and see each one of us. You say in your word that you know your sheep. Lord, I do pray for each young child who is listening this morning. Lord, that they would know you as their good shepherd. Lord, that they would trust in you as their good shepherd. That they would follow you where you lead that they would obey you, and Lord, that they would be able to rest in you. Even this day, as we cannot gather together, yet if we be with our shepherd, we rest safe in his care. And so, Lord, we do commit uh, each one into your care this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, everybody. It's good to be with you. And I'm sorry that you're all in lockdown once again and, and we're not able to meet, but hopefully you will have a good time and find plenty to occupy yourselves with. And we'll see you again soon. So today we're going to be looking at um, the days before Noah. And we're going to be looking at Enoch, who was a very godly man. And we're going to be looking at walking with God. And we're in Genesis chapter 5. But um, we're not going to read the whole chapter because the first part of the chapter is all about the generations. Some of those we covered last week. And we're just going to read the part about Enoch today. So we're in Genesis chapter 5, verse 21. And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and he begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. So last week, we looked at Seth, the son of Adam and Eve, and his son Enos, and how people began to call upon the name of the Lord. And today, as I said, we're going to look at Enoch. So um, first of all, we'll just have a look at some of the men that were mentioned there in, in the chapter before Enoch. After Seth and Enos, we read of other names that are mentioned. Uh, people, it's just talking about people who were born and people who died. And these names were mentioned. Canaan, Mahalalil, and Jared, and then we've got Enoch. And interestingly enough, Canaan, Mahalalil, and Jared, they are all mentioned in the genealogy of Christ in Luke chapter 3, which we had a look at last week or, or the week before. And then there's Enoch. And there is nothing particularly noteworthy concerning these men, though we have reason to believe they were renowned, that means known, well known, in their day for their discretion and devotion. And they all lived long lives, but one thing is said of all of them, and that is that they died. They all died. They were born and they died. Death comes to all of us, rich, poor, old, young, healthy, unhealthy. It catches off with all of us at some stage but Enoch was different. Enoch was 65 when he had Methuselah and after that he walked with God 300 years. He had sons and daughters. Can you imagine that walking with God all that time? I can't. It's a long long time to walk with God. How well he must have known the Lord and in both verses 22 and 24 it says and Enoch walked with God. The Holy Spirit points this out twice. In verse 22 it says, And Enoch walked with God. And in verse 24 we read, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, 
for God took him. Enoch is mentioned again in the book of Hebrews, and we'll just have a look at that scripture in, in Hebrews, in chapter 11, and we're in uh, verse 5. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony, thus he pleased God. And so the word translated there, it just means um, to move from one place or condition to another. As in this case, we're talking about Enoch was moved from earth to heaven. And that's, that's what it means. And notice there it says that he had this testimony that, that he pleased God. God was pleased with him. And we don't very often read that in the Bible. He had this testimony that he pleased God. So he must have been very special. And all of the other men that were mentioned may have lived good lives, we suppose, but Enoch surpassed them all. He was the brightest star of the patriarchal age. Enoch was seventh from Adam. There is little recorded about him, but this little is enough for us to know that he was grace, his name was grace. We know from what was written that he was a gracious man and a godly man. The ungodly and worldly are without God in the world. They walk contrary to him, but the godly, they walk with God. And we are told twice that Enoch walked with God, as we have said. To walk with God is to set God always before us and to act as those that are always under his eye. It's to walk and to, before the face of God, to know that God is looking, looking down upon us and to act accordingly. It is to live a life of fellowship with God, both in worship of him and wisdom in our dealings with others. We are to be kind to others. We are to treat them kindly and considerately. And we are to have fellowship with God. We are to pray to God, to talk to him, and we are to allow him to talk to us. And that is by reading the word of God. It is to make God's word our rule and his glory our aim in all our actions. We must obey God. We, we must obey his word. And if his word says something is right, then we must accept that that is right. And if his word says something is wrong, then we must accept that it is wrong. It is to obey his will, to agree with his intentions and to be workers together with him. It is to agree with God, as I have just said, what God says is what we are to believe. We do not start to argue with God and say that we think something differently. We agree with God. And Enoch was dead to this world. He walked with God as if he were in heaven already. He was a godly man. He had a true faith. He did not die as others did. God just took him. Someone once wrote that he walked so close to God that one day God said, you may just as well come on home. And you know, we can all, we can all take, take that from, take from, from um, Enoch that we should seek to please God. We should, we should always seek to be in fellowship with God, to read his word daily, to pray to him daily, and to seek to please God as as Enoch did. And then we're just going to have a little look at Methuselah. Methuselah was one of Enoch's sons. He died at the age of 969. He lived the longest of all human figures mentioned in the Bible. At a very, very old age to live, 969. He was the father of Lamech. He was the grandfather of Noah. Lamech was Noah's father and Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth. And I just want to mention to you another man in the Bible that we read of who, who never died as the normal, normal people do, and that's Elijah. And we read of Elijah and Elisha um, in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11, and it says, And it came to pass as they still went on and talked, so they were talking, just talking amongst themselves, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven so there's Elijah you all know Elijah you've all heard about Elijah before and he's another person who never died uh, the normal way he he too was just taken straight up to heaven differently to how Enoch was taken we don't know how Enoch was taken 
but Elijah too, he was taken up to heaven. And then we've just got some questions for you. And I know you can't answer them as you normally do, but um, you can answer them in your own way. Like, then I'll give you the answers. And, um, or you can, if your mum or someone's watching with you, then you can tell them the answers. So the other men who were mentioned, what was the one thing that was said of them all? I'll give you a little moment to think about this. They all died, yes. They died. Did Enoch die? No. Does death come to all? Rich, poor, young, old, healthy, unhealthy? Yes, it does. Can you remember what Enoch's son was called? Methuselah. How many times is is Enoch walked with God mentioned in that chapter? Twice. Hebrews says Enoch was translated. What does translated mean? That's a little bit hard, that one. It means to move from one place or condition to another. And here it is speaking of from earth to heaven. Right, who was the brightest star of the patriarchal age? Enoch. Was Enoch gracious? Yes, he was. Was he godly? Yes. What does it mean to walk with God? There's a few reasons I gave you, a few different things that we mentioned. Can you think of any of them? What does it mean to walk with God? To set God always before us, to always feel like that we are walking in the face of God, that um, God is looking down upon us and to act accordingly, to act as if we were under his eye, to live a life of fellowship with God, that is to read his word and to pray to him and spend time with God. And in our worship and also in our dealings with others, we are to treat others kindly and we must be careful how we treat other people. We must always be careful what we say, think before you speak and to obey his will, to agree with him. Was Enoch dead to this world? Yes, he was. His, his, his life was spent up with God, wasn't it? How long did Methuselah live? 969 years. He was the father of Lamech. Who was he grandfather to? Noah. So, though there is little written about Enoch, we can learn a lot about him from the little that there is. He walked with God and God took him. He had this testimony that he pleased God. And that is something that we must all aim to please God in our walk with God and in our walk in our lives. Do you walk with God? Do you please God? You need to ask yourselves that, those questions. Can it be said of you that you are a godly child or, or a gracious child? Can it be said of you that you love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind? Do you seek to obey God? You may not get hundreds of years on this earth as Enoch did, but make sure you use your time on earth profitably. Walk with God, read his word, pray, obey him, trust him and love him with all your heart. He is a gracious God and you will never ever regret it. And so we're going to leave the message there for now and we'll just have a little prayer just to close off. Dear Lord God and Father in heaven, I thank you Lord for the time we've been able to spend with the children. And I pray, Lord, for each child that listens in, Lord, that you would bless the word of God to their hearts, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that each child would come to know more of you this day and understand the things of God. I pray for salvation, Lord, for each child. And for those who are saved, I pray they would be strengthened in their faith. Do bless each child, Lord, and each family circle, Lord, and be with them, Lord, through this lockdown and, and through the week that lies ahead. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we're going to close off there. So goodbye for now. And hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.